Hey, what's up guys? The audio from the original intro clip was really staticky for some reason, so I'm just checking in from the studio. Today we'll be playing about 15 holes at Reedy Creek with the Phase 1 2024 OTB drops. Um, we have the Glow Servo, we've got the Glow Lift, we've got the, I believe that's the um, Prism Proton Hex, we've got the Soft Proton Paradox, uh, we've got the Proton Tempo, and then we've got the proton soft glitch there so anyway this is going to be 15 holes give or take at reedy creek i'm throwing the servo here on hole 10 that's gonna be our starting hole today and just absolutely puring the servo you guys are really going to like that new servo it flies pretty much exactly how you would want a servo to fly just nice and straight a little bit of flip up a little bit of turn of you force and then a nice fade then the lift actually flies very similar. But anyway, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and enjoy the video. And I do believe for the first wave here, this servo is probably the most hyped up drop. And based on one throw so far today, I can see why you guys are excited about it. That was nice. Hole 11 is going to require a very substantial left to right moving shot. So we're going to need to lean into either the understable backhand, which is this paradox, if I can execute, should be perfect for the shot. Or it can go with a little more stable option or something like the servo and we go with more of a hyzer shot. Now the backhand can get you further over to the right, which is going to get you a better look at the basket, but it's also a little bit riskier for me. Let's see how this paradox does. For those of you paradox throwers out there, that Paradox has way more fade than any other Paradox I've ever thrown. It's definitely a few ticks more stable, and I think that's actually a run that people are going to be really excited about. The Paradox is kind of one of those discs that's too understable for most people, but the OTB run of those has a little bit more stability, and it's going to be a really fun thrower, I can already tell. Now let's see how the servo goes here on a hyzer. As long as it keeps going left to right, that should be absolutely ideal. And another two decent shots. So this is the corner that we had to throw through the tee boxes way up there. We actually got the servo all the way to there, which I'm thinking probably missed the ace by about one foot. And then this paradox did give us a circle's edge look as well. So both the backhand and the forehand giving us an excellent look at the short basket birdie. I've got about a 230 foot par three here. We'll try the tempo, the glitch, and we'll try out the hex on this one. We don't have a ton of holes for the tempo and the glitch, so we'll just throw them both when we get the opportunity to do so. That's the glitch. Aced it. <laughs> the glitch is nice. All right, tempo. Let's see if we can get a little ante on this guy. That's a little Annie. Give me a flex. That's flexing back to absolute perfection. And then we got this super sweet Prism Proton Hex. I think we'll just go straight at the basket here. We got a beautiful tree kick that's absolutely parked, but that glitch is absolute fire. You glitch throwers are really going to enjoy that run. And although this extra cool tempo did hit an early tree. We got two absolutely beautiful park jobs with the hex and with the glitch. Hole 14 might be our last opportunity for the glitch. Let's see if it can hold a little Anheuser here. And this is what it looks like down here once you clear this gap here. It's actually quite a big downhill. You've got the basket here and then the glitch unfortunately soared all the way down there. More like 70 long. Things an absolute glide machine. I left the servo back on hole 10 or 11 and I asked like three different groups. I couldn't, I was, I was like, somebody had to have picked it up because I left it right in the middle of the fairway. I pretty much parked the hole. And the fourth group I ran into, someone finally had it, which would have been an absolute shame for a few different reasons because these servos, these are probably gonna be the first thing to sell out. This is the one that the pe people seem to be most hyped up and excited for. Then if I lost it, I couldn't throw it in the video anymore and I couldn't show you guys how it flies. Anyway, we got the servo. 
That's a big win. All right, hole 15, longest hole on the course. We're gonna need the servo, so I'm glad I was able to track it down. Basically a full rip. Wanna have something flip up and go mostly straight down that gap and the basket is slightly to the left. We'll go servo and then we'll go lift. That could be great, missed the last tree. Get in the hole. All right, that'll play, that was a very good shot. Let's see if we can do something similar with the lift. I think it needs a little bit more flat. It's not quite as, doesn't quite the flip up. That's even better. I could skip in. The lift and the servo are both really good. I think you guys are really gonna like these OTB runs. All right, I'm super curious to see where these wound up because that would be quite the crush for me to get there on this hole with you know, seven or an eight speed. I do believe they're both seven speeds, but I could be wrong. So you guys can correct me in the comment section down below. But if I could get, you know, 350, 360 feet with a seven speed, I feel like that's a good sign that my form is improving. I'm getting more powerful. Both of those throws felt pretty smooth. So I'm hoping at least one of those is pinned high and they I'll have to check the tape. I couldn't really see them finish, but there was definitely a chance that, that second one could have been like a pretty sweet ace run. All right, we've got the basket right here. The servo is actually inside the circle. That is a nice looking birdie putt on this hole. One of the tougher holes in the course for sure. The lift I thought went farther. It must be very much so a bit more fady than the servo. The servo I think flipped up more, held much straighter. And I can see why you guys like the servo so much. All of you guys that throw craves that follow this channel that like seeing me throw the crave. I'm sure a lot of you guys are also bagging the servo. And this run is pretty darn sweet. Pull 17, 284 feet. You pretty much need to go twice as far left as you do need to go straight. I don't think I can get there with the glitch. But we're gonna give it a try just for style points. I need to use all the height available in this fairway. If I'm gonna get there, it's gonna be like that. Go in. All right, now we'll try the servo as well. That's got good height. Oh, those are definitely two ace runs. I love those discs. All right, fortunately, we had a guy watching the uh, basket from uh, off in the rough there. He said the servo almost went in, barely missed. But this glitch is inside the circle for really an easy tap and birdie. So I'm actually pretty hyped to get the glitch up there. Hole one is a tough get for the glitch, but I think if I throw it nice and hard, a little bit of height, and flat to slash slight Anheuser, it could be perfect. And I'm as far as it gets from being like a glitch fanboy, but that run of glitch is sick. That is by far my favorite run of glitch. Now I've got the paradox here. Heiser flip. Oh, look at the turn. So you can see it's obviously very understable, but it still had a little bit of fade and swing at the end of the flight. I do want to try the skip ace with the lift though. Or the all air ace. We're skipping. My thoughts on throwing one speeds is that it sucks really bad at first, but as you continue to do it more, you get a lot better at it and it starts to become a lot more fun and something you actually look forward to throwing. And that glitch is making me consider putting it in the bag. It's not quite there yet, but as far as glitches go, that's, that's the closest I've gotten so far is that thing flies like an absolute beauty on every single line I've thrown it on today so far. And that is another glitch birdie to jot down on the fake non-existent, non-putting scorecard. Absolute beauty, this thing is so good. It's like five feet from the basket. All right, hole two is another absolute perfect opportunity for this glitch. Give me a little fade. Oh, a little too straight. I really like that new glitch. All right, this hex also needs some love. Let's see if we can hit a hyzer on the left side and put one close. Oh, nice. Uh, I think that's absolutely parked. Paradox. 
Flip. Go in. Oh, oh I just hit basket. Oh, no. That was so absolutely disgustingly filthy. Drilling it right off the cage. That was mere inches from being an insanely sick ace. All right, we got two more holes left to play. This is hole four. We're gonna go glitch, hex, paradox. Let's see if we can get a little metal action with this glitch. That's the line. Oh, not quite enough fade. Man, that is a good run, man. All right, nice soft hyzer paradox. So if you power down on it, you just get absolutely clean laser beams. And then we've got the hex. I should be able to power up on this one a little bit more. Skipped a bit long, but definitely held its line nicely. Check this out. We've got an absolutely Park City, Utah on the Paradox laser beam dead straight. And then at this point, you shouldn't even be surprised. One foot from the basket, another absolute park job birdie. All right, hole five. This may just be my favorite hole in the course. I've never thrown a stock servo, but you servo enjoyers out there are also going to enjoy this servo. Absolutely great flyer. It's hard to get discs to turn uphill. Fade. Paradox is perfect for this shot because it's so understated. All right, they can't hear you. I got the mic on, but I'm speaking on behalf of Vince here. He's going to throw this hex here. Let's see if he can. The shot that shook the world. Oh, it's a beauty. Swing. Oh, that was a nice line. Good shot, Vince. All right, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. There's some absolute dimes out there today. I had a ton of fun throwing these OTB discs. And they're actually gonna also send me out wave two. So if you wanna see my reviews of the wave two discs or phase two discs, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know in the comment section down below that you guys wanna see that video. I'll do an unboxing and then do a round with them just like I did with the phase one. Starting off with the Proton Soft Glitch, this thing is an absolute beauty. By far, in my opinion, the best glitch ever made. I think the stamp is fire. I think the Proton Soft is fire. It's nice and stiff around the rim. The plastic is very soft and, and supple and really easy to sink your fingers into. And as far as glitches go, I think this is probably my favorite run by far. All right, next up we have this Proton Soft Paradox. And although the Paradox is probably not something that would ever go in my main bag, I think it's a little bit too flippy for, you know, really trying to focus on scoring well out on the course for me. I think my arm is just a little bit too fast to have this be a staple in my bag, unless it's for like, Rolo style trick shots, something where I want to throw it really high and get a lot of turn, or maybe like some really uncomfortable patent pending shots where I'm really not getting a full swing is really only the place where this is going to suit my game. But if I'm going out in ace running, you bet your bottom dollar I'm bringing this bad boy out because the late hyzer flips just look so sick. And as far as that, you guys saw it on hole three, absolute dime. Hyzer flip, super late flip, absolute filthy, disgusting turnover. This is the disc for the job, but when it comes to scoring well, I probably wouldn't trust it with uh, you know, my rating and my strokes on the line. Next up, we've got the Tempo. This is the disc I threw the least today. I don't think it's a bad disc. I just think that the course I was playing today didn't really call for a lot of tempo shots. This would be more of an upshot disc. And I'd be really curious to see if this beats in and holds up its stability over time. It's already pretty straight. Um, again, I could be wrong, but my understanding of the tempo is that most people use it for an upshot disc. It flies very similar to my Cosmic Fury, actually. Like, I feel like I can get it to pretty much stay straight through most of the flight and then have a little bit of a nice little controlled fade at the end. Um, I tend to bag discs that are farther in one direction or the other than this one is. So for upshots, I tend to bag something either more straight that doesn't fade as much or more stable that fades a lot just so I have 100% confidence that the shot I'm throwing is going to do what I want it to do. And it's kind of one of those tweener discs that's gonna give you that forward push. And this is probably a better option for those faster arm speed players out there to truly maximize on the straight pushing potential that this disc does have. Um, the stamp is fire, the plastic is fire, and I had that little cute cotton candy rim, which I absolutely love. Next disc, we've got the Hex with the Flaming Rat with the 
owl moose over top of it. I thought the prism plasma hex would be a little bit more stable, but to my delight and my surprise, this actually flew a little bit less stable than a stock hex for me. And this is actually a hex that I feel like I can get to hyzer flip, go mostly straight and then have a little bit fade at the end or put it out flat, get a nice controlled turn and then a little bit of a swing at the end. This is how a hex is supposed to fly. And if you wanna throw a hex like a pro, but you bought the Lazado hex and it was too stable for you, you should try this one because it's actually gonna fly like a hex is supposed to fly. And I give this two thumbs up. I think for whatever reason, this plastic combination in this mold actually flies completely true to the flight. Um, next, we're gonna talk about this lift here. I think the lift is if the T-Bird is a little bit too stable for you, but maybe something like, you know, Prodigy F7 or one of those really flippy fairways is a little bit too understable for you. I think the lift is gonna be that perfect workhorse fairway driver for a lot of players. It's not completely board flat, but it's pretty flat. I feel like most MVP and Axiom discs are almost always flat. So it feels really comfortable in the hand for backhand and on forehand. I see myself, I didn't do it today, but I could see myself enjoying this on Heiser flip forehands, um, just laser straight backhands. And I threw some really awesome shots with this today and I had a really great time throwing the lift. Last, but most certainly not least, we've got the Servo here. This is the most hyped disc from the first wave of OTB drops this year, and it did not disappoint. This thing's an absolute beauty. Flies great on backhand and on forehand. Flies completely accurate to the flight numbers. I get a little bit of flip up and then a nice controlled fade at the end, which is exactly how the servo is supposed to fly. Um, any shots like 330 to 350, I would 100% see myself throwing the servo with confidence. It's stable enough to where it's not gonna overturn, but it's it's like not too stable to where you can't get it to go anywhere. Like this is a disc that I can very easily throw well over 300 feet with some really great accuracy, which again, on backhand and on forehand, it's gonna get that little bit of flip up and then a nice controlled fade. Final thing I wanna do is just give you guys my top three picks. Obviously Proton Soft Glitch, absolutely love this. Probably the top performer for all skill levels is going to be this Servo. I think this is gonna be a great disc for basically anybody. And then the most fun disc is probably gonna be this Paradox. And although I wouldn't put it in my bag for competitive play, it's something that I will put in my bag for funsy rounds, trick shots, like I throw my real shot and then I try to do some like gross, disgusting turnover with this guy. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about everything in the comment section down below. Um, if there's any additional information you guys would like to see me go over the next time I review the next OTB drop, I'd uh, definitely be open to criticisms in the comment section down below. Anything you would like to see or any additional information you like about the discs, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.